And tonight from Zurich, I'll be telling Robin Denslow how to rap. Hey, Debbie Harry, the rock world's best known pin up and the lead singer of New York's massively popular rock band Blondie, released her first solo album away from the group. Musically, it marks a change of direction because she's now working with the city's most successful disco group, Chic. But the new album, Coo Coo, has proved most controversial, mainly because of its cover showing Debbie with needles sticking through her head. Indeed, posters advertising the album have been widely banned from public display. Now, the cover is a painting based on the work of the Swiss artist 8 H. R. Diger, who's best known for his work on the science fiction film Alien. At his home in Zurich, he's been working with Debbie Harry on equally bizarre films illustrating songs from the album. And it's from there that Robin Denslow now reports. Zurich, Switzerland's traditional home of gnomes and bankers, is not exactly a town renowned for its association with pop music, the art world, or multimedia experiments. But one man now involved in all three is artist and designer H.R. Giger, disciple of Hieronymus Bosch and Salvador Dali, who lives in a pleasant but unassuming terraced house on the edge of town. The mask outside gives just a hint of the bizarre world he's created inside. Giger's best-known creations are the sets and monsters for the sci-fi horror film, Alien. I always want to find out what's inside of me and maybe what's, inside, what's, what's outside of me, what's in another world and in the cosmo, cosmos, what kind of creature can be. And so I found out my uh, that's a real, um, I call them biomechanics. I like very much the combi combination about mechanic and... Um, uh, <laughs> machine. Uh, machi and mach machine and human... Uh, or or, or uh, biologic things. And I made the, cre the creature in the film Alien like that. Wait a minute, this movement. It seems to have life. Organic life. It wouldn't be pleasant to have Giger's nightmares. But his admirers in the art and music world extend far beyond addicts of sci-fi and horror. The name on the list didn't fit the ID. Today, Debbie Harry, Blondie's lead singer, releases her first solo album, Cuckoo, in which she's backed by her close friend, Chris Stein, and members of New York's most successful black disco outfit, Chic. To tell you what I know. The cover of Debbie with needles through her head is by H.R. Giger. I like very much music, rock music. Uh, every time when I'm painting, I have music. It gives me stimula as a stimulation. And in another way, it was a very good meeting when I met Chris and Debbie at the Hansen Gallery in New York when I had this um, Oscar award, or how you say, the Oscar. Academy Award, we have the meeting and Debbie, she liked my work, work very much. So she came and we, they invited 
us to her penthouse and so we had the first contact and when she made her own album when she liked to change her image she asked me by telephone to do maybe a cover for her and i i was once once i was thick and uh, i was treated with acupuncture so i had the uh, idea because she is a kind of she is the queen of punk, really, and punk for me was always safety pins or to stick something in, into, and I have these things together, the acupuncture needles. Uh, I put her through the head as kind of stimulation, and the, the lightnings in, back, in, in the back, they are, it's uh, taken energy from the air to stimulate her. Now, Giger is interpreting two of the songs from the album in an elaborate film, later to be a video, for which he's produced a new set of paintings and built elaborate, equally strange props. It's to be no ordinary rock promotional clip. He's using Debbie Harry as an actress to express his fantasies. So does she regard this rock video clip, which might be seen here on programmes like Top of the Pops, as an art form? happens to be so based on Geeker's work that it is, you know, in that realm, but um, I think a lot of video promo films these days are very elaborate and uh, quite expensive productions. So, um, you know, I can't really make claim to that alone, but definitely his work is paramount. This is part of it for the video. Yeah, this is the New York work, and uh, this was in partly inspired on his recent trip, you know, to the States when he got the Academy Award. And um, it's, it's really a great coincidence that you know, we all got tied together. And this work was uh, happening simultaneously, which we didn't really know about until we got here. So how's he doing the video? I mean, is it his idea of what the songs yeah, are about? Yeah, he's directing it. Every, uh, every, totally and you just idea. let him do exactly what he wants? And... Yeah. In a way, it's very, very opposite the music. Almost yeah. totally opposite. It's something I would never think of in a million years, which I think is great. I become, you know, like his characters and uh, his creatures that he has in all of his paintings is that's what I become one sort of in transition and and I An alien monster. I come out not quite <laughs> I'm not scary <laughs> but if you were to uh, you know if you turn these paintings this way they become traffic and trains flashing by I mean they really, they're very New York I mean I really I've you know I just just definitely know that that's what it is In love with music, so fancy free. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and and that's uh, the biggest statement that I've probably ever made. I mean, it, it's all within you how something affects you and how you feel about it. So. This does That's this girl it. look serious? She looks serious. <laughs> I'm not but serious. <laughs> Debbie Harry had moved to the city in the mid-60s when she got her first job working in the BBC office there. She was soon spending most of her time in the small, seedy New York clubs where Blondie started. First, they sounded like a raw garage band. Their first British shows were certainly disappointing. But then Chris and Debbie started mixing new wave with black musical styles, from disco, once considered the antithesis of punk, to Jamaican rock steady. The result was a quite remarkable series of hit singles and albums. Songs like Heart of Glass and Eat to the Beat sold over a million copies. And the year before last, Blondie sold more singles and albums in Britain than any other artists. The band were helped by Debbie Harry's image. She became the best-known pin-up in rock and was compared to Marilyn Monroe. 
Today, she's no longer a blondie. Her hair's gone back to its natural brown, though she wore a wig when we filmed the interview. Now she's actively involved in the art world, how does she regard her other role as a pin-up? It's not, I don't even really think about it anymore. It's, it's nice, it's part of like, it, for a while it was really part of my, uh, you know, my, my art as making myself a product, you know. I really felt that it was a cool thing to do. I haven't really thought about it lately. So when we met you last night, we were looking very different. I just wondered if the image sometimes was something you wanted to escape from. Well, I feel like, you know, I have a lot of, I feel like I have a lot of um, images to reflect. You know, I can, I feel like I can portray a lot of different characters. You think Blondie was a character you were playing at rather than that being you? No, not entirely. I think, you know, it's, um, you know, I mean, you've been several, you've had several different occupations in your life and, you know, have been with different lovers or whatever, and, and you're always a slightly different person. So, that's what my job is. It's a change of image for Debbie Harry, but for Giga, she's just another figure to be fitted into the bizarre world of his paintings. My, in my paintings are things I like, or I hate, or I'm afraid about, but I never do harmless things like uh, uh, flowers, or I mean, <laughs> if they are flowers, maybe they are the flowers they eat some. <laughs> we'll be able to judge how the fusion of black magic, black music, and white singer has worked out when the video is finished in a couple of weeks. Inevitably, the solo project has led to speculation over the future of Blondie as a band. Does this mean the end of Blondie as we know it? <laughs> no, right, right on. Um, no, it doesn't. The history of most rock groups, most rock groups, um, except for very few, have been, you know, that they, they go up to a certain point and then they just level off or go down and lose popularity or sort of maintain, you know. And, but then once they sort of come to a um, point or some kind of identity, they don't usually change it. And I think that um, that is sort of like a a, um, a condition that's that's controlled by commercial, being a commercial group and having to tour and have so many albums out per year and the pressures of the business world. It really doesn't have much to do with being a musician or a writer. And um, so we we just try to make things right for the kind of people that we are, and you know to make our work better. Crying for life. Oh come on, my little lady, don't you get down. I got strong connections all over town. Just drop to a dead stop. Well, that report was by Robin Denslow, but I'm afraid it's.